Welcome to Open Geology. This is a effort to share geology with everybody. This is created by Salt Lake Community College instructors. This goes with a textbook at opengeology.org textbook. Today we'll be talking about sedimentary rocks, specifically chemical and biochemical sedimentary rocks. Chemical sedimentary rocks are, unlike clastic sedimentary rocks, rocks that precipitate from solution. This is, and by precipitate I mean crystallize or form out of water, which is the opposite of dissolve. I have included a video of crystallization, and I'll, I'll put the link to that video uh, in the description of this one. Precipitation can occur either by uh, inorganic processes like evaporation, or from uh, groundwater or organic processes such as critters pulling chemicals out of the water to build their skeletons and homes or uh, large piles of shells from those critters. We're going to talk about several different types of chemical sedimentary rocks. So let's start with limestone which is one of the most abundant ones and one of my favorites. Limestone is made mostly of the mineral calcite which is calcium carbonate. And the depositional environments for the limestone can include both inorganic and biochemical organs. Here's a picture of some limestone in beautiful Logan Canyon. Some biogenic uh, biochemical limestone can is generally made mostly by marine organisms. And a, a good guess for a depositional environment for this type of limestone is coral reefs. Uh, coral reefs will often produce fossiliferous limestone, which is a shell and fossil hash with uh, cement and calcium carbonate mud in between the fossil shells. Uh, I'll have a picture of that in an upcoming slide. And then uh, another type of this biochemical limestone is chalk, which is made up of these microscopic shells. Here's a picture of some of the microscopic calcium carbonate shells. I think they're called coccolithophores, but I'm not positive on that. Here's a picture of that depositional environment we were just talking about. And uh, here is a picture of some fossiliferous limestone. You can see in the profile view where this limestone has been cut, all these little shells that kind of look like cornflakes uh, mashed together with little fine gray mud in between each shell. The fossils in this particular picture are a little bit darker just so you can differentiate. Oolitic limestone is another type of limestone and uh, its depositional environment is warm shallow ocean water. And to make ooids uh, you need three things. Water that is super saturated or has a very a high amount of calcium and carbonate ions. You need something for the crystals to uh, nucleate on, to grow on, and a very common thing for that is fish poop. And then finally you need uh, a gentle rolling motion in shallow marine water to kind of roll these nucleating crystals around. And when they get uh, glued together you get uh, beautiful limestone like oolitic limestone. Next we have uh, inorganic limestones like travertine and tufa. These form from the precipitation of calcium carbonate or, or calcite as uh, the water that is carrying that calcite, the ions for that calcite degasses. So here is a picture of some tufa uh, forming at Mammoth Hot Springs in Yellowstone National Park, the north end of Yellowstone. And as the water leaves the groundwater system and emerges to the surface, it degasses and releases its calcite in these beautiful uh, tufa terraces. And then in a, in a fairly similar process, here's water moving through a cave system. And as it moves through the cave system, um, it precipitates its calcium carb carbonate as travertine. 
A similar or close relative of limestone is dolostone. It's made of dolomite, which is very much like calcite, except it's magnesium calcium carbonate. And uh, there's still some debate, as far as I understand, of the origin of dolostone, but some potential uh, depositional environments include uh, tidal flat, tidal lagoon areas, where you have super concentration of magnesium and calcium ions. And then a lot of people think that a lot of dolostone could form as a secondary process after the rock becomes lithified. You can have water moving, groundwater moving through that's magnesium rich that changes limestone into dolostone. Dolostone is generally harder than limestone and it, it doesn't fizz as readily when you put hydrochloric acid on it. Another cool type of chemical sedimentary rock is chert. And you can have both biogenic and non-biogenic chert. Uh, biogenic chert forms uh, like biogenic limestone from, uh, like biogenic limestone can at least, from these tiny microscopic shells. So this is kind of the equivalent to chalk for uh, biogenic limestone, except these shells are made out of uh, silica, right? These, I think these are diatoms in this picture. And these will accumulate at the ocean bottom uh, beyond the uh, zone where calcium carbonate generally can, it, can precipitate. So at a, at a fairly great depth, you get these silicious oozes that will pile up and then later lithify. So the good, uh, good depositional environment for this is an ocean floor. For the non-biogenic chert, you can, this can commonly form as silicious center, which can happen at hot springs, or a lot of times you can be depositing uh, quartz in groundwater systems, sp special groundwater, silica-rich groundwater systems. Another type of chemical sedimentary rock are evaporites, and a great uh, example of a depositional environment for these is the Bonneville Salt Flats. And here you see uh, an immense amount of evaporites, which is the white rock in this picture. These are created by the process of evaporation. As water evaporates from a playa lake or something similar, uh, it concentrates the ions in that water and causes precipitation of halite and gypsum, creating rock salt and rock gypsum. Coal is a, a very important chemical sedimentary rock, and this forms from the accumulation of plant matter. So a really common depositional environment for this is swamps and peat bogs. And here is an example of what that depositional environment might look like. This will eventually create peat, which can accumulate in large quantities, and then that will get compressed. And over time, through the process of diagenesis, you'll create uh, different grades of coal. And so that is it for chemical sedimentary rocks. Um, please do come back for some depositional environments and sedimentary structures.